Hi, I'm Hannah Bernard. You're watching Market One Minute, and I'm here today with Aaron Cheddar of Global Energy Metals Corporation. There's so much excitement around the battery metals sector, but what is the best way to invest in it? Lots of people are looking for opportunities to get exposure into, into the lithium battery space, and attention has been put on lithium, mm -hmm. attention has been put to graphite, and just recently investors have realized that there's another ingredient in lithium batteries, and that's cobalt often more valuable than the lithium or the graphite in the battery. Mm. There aren't a lot of ways to get exposure to that as an investment space. Uh, some people are looking at physical metal, mm. others are looking at equities. And when they look at equities, they realize that there are very few pure cobalt companies in Canada with Canadian project, and that's us. So what are some of the key items that a potential investor should look for when analyzing opportunities in lithium and cobalt? Right, so when you're looking at a company, you want to see um, a management team that has been involved in battery metals for a number of years. So not, not a company that's just come around lately, mm -hmm. but a company whose senior management team has met with the battery component manufacturers in Asia, who understands the supply chain, who understands how much byproduct material is in that supply chain, and what the ultimate end users are actually looking for, for material. So let's talk about Global Energy Metals Corporation. You've been around for 10 years. Let's talk about your Werner Lake project. So Global Energy Metals um, is the successor company uh, which now holds what's called the Werner Lake Cobalt Project. Mm -hmm. That project is the most advanced primary Canadian project. Uh, it has um, lots of years of study. and. That project has allowed us to assemble a team mm -hmm. that has worked in Asia, that's worked in the supply chain, and that is really uh, positioned to not just advance that project, but to acquire a range of other supply and bring it to our end user partners in Asia. So let's talk about the strategy in accomplishing that. How do you hope to do that? Sure. One of the big issues with cobalt is a lot of it is byproduct. Mm -hmm. So it comes out of nickel mines or copper mines. And so it's very difficult for battery component manufacturers to get a secure supply of that material. Yeah. And our strategy is to aggregate that supply from a number of different sources so that our end user partners in Asia know that they have secure supply so they can bid for battery contracts. So as far as some key developments that are going to be coming in the near future in the battery metal sector, what should we be looking for? Well, there's ongoing attention, as you know, for lithium battery uh, applications, not just electric vehicles, but you know, handheld electronics, laptops, all um, home storage. We're going to continue to see that grow. And I think when some of the inflection points that investors are going to want to look for is price accretion in the cobalt, uh, the cobalt price. We're seeing that already. It's mm -hmm. gone up past $30,000 a ton, which was, is a big break point for uh, the cobalt market. And I'm expecting to see that price continue to rise, and that's only going to put more attention onto companies like ours. So let's talk about the attention on cobalt. There's been a lot of buzz around lithium for quite some time, but now it's starting to shift over to cobalt as well. Why do you think that is? Well, you're right. Lithium got a lot of attention, probably because it's called a lithium-ion battery, mm -hmm. and m most people just don't think that there's cobalt in those batteries. Uh, as people have become more educated on the sector, they're now understanding that cobalt is a big ingredient, sometimes the most valuable ingredient in a battery, and the, the lack of security of supply has, has confused investors on how to approach investing in this. They know the cobalt price is going to go up. They know that batteries are going to become more and more important. They just couldn't figure out a path how to get exposure into cobalt. And that's one of the things that we're going to offer. Now that's you. Now that's us. So let's talk about some of the risks of battery metals projects. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what sort of risks are you guys seeing? Wow, there, like, like any metals project, there are lots of risks. Uh, there's, uh, for battery metals in particular, and, and cobalt in particular, um, a lot of the cobalt supply is in the DRC, mm. and that is um, concerning to battery buyers because they're worried about s supply interruptions. Um, they're also worried about um, the nature in which that mining takes place. Is it environmentally sustainable? Is it humane? Mm -hmm. So when battery buyers are 
trying to put in place their supply chain, they're really looking for diversification away from DRC supply or supply that has sort of those red flags associated with it. Mm -hmm. And that's an advantage of the projects that we're putting together mm -hmm. is that we're, we're offering that alternate supply mechanism for battery component manufacturers. There's so many exciting elements to global energy metals, but tell us why investors should invest in your company. Well, we believe we have the strongest and most experienced cobalt uh, project team in Canada. We have certainly the premier project in Canada, mm -hmm. and what we have is a deep understanding of the supply chain, how the supply chain operates, and that is something I don't think anyone else could offer. Lots of exciting news flow to look forward to. Erin, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.